everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm so excited and happy to see all of you today. And I'm super excited about moderating a panel on a topic very close to my heart, uh, networking. Um, I'll start with a, with, a, with a quote which I came while I was just preparing for this session, right? Which, was, which I thought was a great way to start. It says, networking is not about just connecting people. It's about connecting people with people, people with ideas, and people with opportunities. Uh, and I feel this, this quote is a very appropriate quote to even start the conversation because if I look at why we are all here and doing She Sparks, it is simply because of the coming together of a network of women that we call power women. So I'll start with a question which you know I'm very curious to know from all of you. What do you feel has been, you know, the biggest sort of, you know, benefit or, you know, uh, you know, why is the Power Women group as a community special to each of you? Uh, and I'll take this in alphabetical order. So Ansu will start with you. <laughs> uh, hi, all. Uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, benefit, I would think that personally for me, the biggest benefit is to have access to so many friends. And uh, uh, for me, that is the network um, that, you know, even uh, at a time, at an age, uh, at the stage in your career, when it is difficult to meet new people, when it is difficult to make friends, you know, unlike when you're in school or college, uh, with this network, you still have access to so many interesting minds and uh, so many interesting people. And for me, that really is the biggest benefit of this entire network of people that I work with uh, and stay with. Thanks, Ansu. Arpana, what about you? Yeah, so I think I second what uh, Anshu just said. But uh, if I were to define it, there will be three things I would put into that category and how power women networks help in general. First of all, I think uh, you're not in your own echo chamber. Uh, you get another woman's perspective. And you have a good feedback loop that can be helpful. And it's not coming from a male perspective. Because sometimes what happens is obviously there's male bias, right? But there's also male bias in our head. And we may interpret things differently thinking about the male bias. And therefore, when you get some feedback from the sisterhood, I think it helps you put things in perspective. That's been important for me, very frankly. The other thing I strongly believe in is that the sisterhoods really uh, help us to fill a very important um, you know, gap that we have in ensuring that women's voices get heard. And uh, you may have heard about this, but and you may have seen it yourself. Whenever you're in a professional environment, you're in a meeting, right? And you've made an important point, but you're a woman. And your point just gets looked over like it didn't happen. But then if a male colleague is saying the same thing, um, it gets much more attention. It'll get the appreciation and the due recognition, right? And what do you do as a woman in this scenario? If that you're the second in, woman in the room, it's important that you come in and you amplify the voice of the first woman and give them the due credit for the idea that they have brought in, right? So uh, similarly, in a women's network, I think you know um, it impl amplifies your voice and your reach, which sometimes you may not get otherwise. So that's I think also a very important aspect. The fact that uh, you know uh, Anjali is doing this today for us is also a way of reaching out, right? So it's it's important. And uh, I think on a lighter note, the third thing that really is helpful is that in a in a women network, which is as different from maybe a mixed network of uh, any sort is, I think you can be very candid and share a lot of just personal struggles with like, you could have your weight issues, where do I buy the best professional dress from? Or how do I deal with ex colleague in office? How do I deal with work and children? Uh, you know, this seems only really very trivial, right? But it's a very important part of how we are successful at work because somebody, another woman has dealt with that problem and they have solved it and they're giving it to you, right? So from my perspective, these three things have been um, very significant for me. Neshala, back to you. That's great, Arpana. And uh, you know, so much great stuff coming from all of you. But I'll, I'll let uh, Dima share her insights about you know, uh, why networking is important. And also, what have you gained from specifically the Power Women Network? OK, so what have I gained from the Power Women Network? Uh, I'll, I'll be short on this one. but. Uh, uh, I'll try to encompass everything in four E's. So it empowers, enables, enriches, and engages. Engages through very interesting conversations, whether I'm able to join in or I'm just soaking in the insights from all of that. It's super beneficial. So these are my takeaways. Wonderful. Uh, and that's so simple, Rima. I really liked it. Uh, Ruhi, let's go to you. Uh, I'd love to hear your perspectives on just what are the benefits of networking? Yeah. 
So networking uh, Nishala, uh, broadly has multiple benefits. I think the first and foremost thing, uh, and I'm going to talk from both personal as well as professional aspect. Uh, from a personal aspect, I think the kind of immense knowledge you gain, uh, the access to information, which is so critical in today's world, is what you immediately get from a personal perspective. And linking that back to the Power Women Network, I think uh, meeting people from such diverse backgrounds, the kind of information that is shared, just the feeling that I'm not alone in this. Sometimes you are going through something and uh, it's very difficult to actually reach out and share your uh, problems with someone. But when you're on that group and you see that other people are facing something similar, you get this feeling that I'm not alone. So that's, you know, that's on the personal aspect. On the professional aspect, I, I can't undermine the, I mean, no one can undermine the importance of networking for professional growth of women in today's world. I mean, uh, research has proven time and time again that uh, what are the reasons that men have access to uh, information across the industry, access to senior leadership, get better opportunities is because they are far more networked. And while women are more social, somehow or the other, uh, their, uh, you know, their tendency or the need or just the sheer amount of time which they may have at their hand to network is lower. So somewhere even professionally, as well as personally, in my opinion, networking is very important. That's wonderful. I think by hearing all four of them, uh, everyone who's tuned in would definitely uh, be clear about why networking is important, right? But then I think the challenge that most of us have is, you know, when to start, right? And how to do it. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, I think, you know, you know, real world experiences from people like yourselves would be great because, uh, you know, personally, I didn't really understand the true value or benefits of networking till I think about 10 years into my career. And I don't know if I started late, uh, but sometimes I feel it would have been nicer if I had started very consciously building a, a professional network for myself early, early on, right? It just gives you like, you know, like, um, you know, it gives you access to opportunities. It gives you access to diverse perspectives. Uh, and it also just gives you an opportunity to make your voice be heard. And sometimes I think for women, that is very, very important, right? To just make your presence felt and make your voice heard. So I'll, I'll, I'll start with the first sort of, you know, question, which I get heard, which I hear a lot is, when should I start networking? Like, is there a right age or stage of your career that women should consciously start, you know, networking? So, um, you know, I, I'll, again, you know, now I'll do it the other way. So we'll start with you, Ruhi. Yeah, sure. So I think the right age, uh, ideally would be somewhere in your mid career. Now, if I'm taking a slightly professional context, so ideally in your twenties, uh, is when, it, because networking is, is not, is a slow burn. You, there, there is the entire process of networking. Then there is a process of actually, uh, reaching deeper and more meaningful connects. And again, you know, quoting from a piece of research, uh, uh, women do not like to engage in the let's catch out for beer, which is a very typical way of networking for men. They're not very comfortable. They want to have deeper and more meaningful connections. Secondly, women are also a little averse to the entire concept of networking. There's a very interesting research paper, which, which has, uh, which shows that somewhere or the other in their mind, women feel that networking is, and it, uh, it's a hyperbole word, dirty. So, uh, they, you know, oftentimes will take a lot of uh, efforts for them to actually start getting the benefit. So, I really, if you start engaging with networks uh, somewhere in the in your mid twenties with a diverse uh, group, you know you'll have to have diversity as well as depth of those relationships. Then that kind of carries forward. Again, in the thirties, you know women have will have other priorities. So somewhere it'll take a back seat. Somewhere it'll take uh, you know somewhere it'll come. Uh, somewhere they will make time for it. But if if ideally you one can start in the mid twenties, there's nothing like it. If not, then definitely uh, uh, 30s is the ideal time to uh, start engaging in networks. And networks could be these days, it's far more easier because it could be online communities as well. Um, and there I would just suggest, Nishala, that we have to somewhere follow a 99-1 rule. Uh, if you notice on groups or on platforms, 90% of the people are dormant. They are just you know spectators, they would just observe. 9% of the people are the people who respond. But one percent of those people are actually conversation starters. So the thumb rule is that at least on one platform, be that one percent. So from a timing perspective and from exactly how you need to engage, these would be my two thoughts. That's great, Ruhi. I, I just wish somebody had told me this ten years back. So start in your thirties at the at the at the latest, and then uh, you know try to you know be 
an active contributor or initiator of a conversation or dialogue in the community right because i think i think that's that's very important than just being you know like a consumer or of of content or a consumer of information in the community right so that's a great great point uh, that you made uh, reema we're coming to you right now right so any any perspectives on you know when is the right time to start so um i cannot talk about a time frame as such i would say this is kind of an inner trigger which happens that now i have uh, considerably uh, uh, i i have something considerable to contribute as in i am in a give mindset as against a receive only because networking so many times is seen as something which we do for our explicit need for the implicit need so when we feel that we can also contribute we can also do things for people without expecting anything in return and perhaps that point comes to different people at different points in time you know there isn't any particular time frame for that so i remember i used to be the kind of agony aunt in school college and i i realized that i derive an immense amount of satisfaction by trying to resolve somebody's woes and by being of some value and uh, there was nothing uh, to to expect in return but now when i realize that i have built such strong relationships where we may not talk for ages but when there is a need to pick it up from where we left i am able to do that effortlessly so i would say uh, starting at a time when you can contribute and without that aspect of uh, getting anything in return so that would be my uh, uh, feedback here wonderful arpana what about you do you do you think there's a right time to start and uh, a right place to start and a right way to start networking i think the right time is always now for everything if you want to start like uh, there was never a good time before this i guess uh, but i also want to put in context that humans are networking since they're born right we have we are essentially social creatures so it's a skill we're born with and i think we are one of the most successful species because we know the power of being together now there is always a difference between how one leverages versus another therefore everybody has a different combination and what works for them you know what rocks their boat basically right but uh, coming to you know when to start you start now but how do you start right it, it a lot of people think there is some strategy to it but in my view you just go do it that's the best way like you would have be a part of some school network you know some colleagues you would have some college network you would have a building network at least if you're in the metropolitan city there are people you are connected with right and you need to think about you know uh, we talked about whether you know people are not participating so there's a passive network and there's an active network right are you a part of a passive network where you're just a passive person you're receiving things maybe whatsapp forwards is all that's happening on your network right how do you rekindle it right or is there a specific network that you're not a part of right do you want to be in it so that's really important um, you know to also identify it and in my view in today's world it's very easy to get introduced to a network you know starting off is actually the easy part it's sustaining it which is the difficult part so whatever you pick make sure that you're investing in it you're growing it you're nurturing it and uh, do it at the pace that you can do only do something that uh, you will be able to sustain because if you don't do that then anyway it's going to die off after some time right and, and i also view it that if now is not the right time it's fine you know you could also start tomorrow you could also start 3 years later but when you do try to be consistent because it'll be helpful great arpana so you're saying be a little mindful of when you start doing it and uh, you know um, you know again from my experience it takes time and energy and effort right it's it's you know you need exactly. to you need to focus on uh, also giving i think as dr reema said it's not just about taking from a from a network but you also have to contribute in some way meaningfully because you know the, the minute you just start becoming a taker after a point you know people will stop giving you as well right uh, you know there is only so much people are willing to give uh, to a perpetual taker so you know it's a little bit of a give and take in in networks and uh, so so anshu i'll come to you right uh, you know you are also you know sort of i think uh, i consider you to be a very good networker personally so you know i i just love to hear from you in terms of when did you start and you know like did, was it conscious or you know was it just something which happened organically and uh any experiences from your own networking journey um so yeah it was absolutely organically i think when i started doing it it was not called networking uh, uh maybe it is now 
uh, and I think you know, like a like a savings account. You know how they say the the sooner you start, the better it is. The earlier you start, the better it is. And uh, I would think that uh, even if you don't do it with the explicit uh, objective of networking, I think it pretty much starts in school and in college, and specifically uh, during the college years, right? When you have uh, uh, when you have more time at your hand, when you're slightly more aware of your interest, when you're slightly more aware of you know what is it that you want to do, even if you might end up changing that later. Uh, in today's day and time, you know there is not there is not an interest group. Uh, which you will not find somewhere uh, or the other, you know, and you can be connected internationally. So if if uh, debating, if debating is your passion, if quizzing is your passion, if sports is your passion or whatever it is, so it can be very, very interest based, very, very passion based. And trust me, all these people who you connect with through passion, they will also end up bringing lots of ideas, lots of opportunities, lots of these support nets uh, that we yearn for from a network, right? So uh, and the other thing which is very important, why you should start while you're still young, when you haven't even stepped into the corporate world as such, is because it's a skill, right? And a lot of people, for example, if you're not a very outgoing person in your school and college, and then you might not find it very easy when you start working, right? Uh, and at that point of time, uh, you know, it, it becomes a little awkward and everybody then tries to kind of do it uh, as against enjoying it, right? Uh, and, and it becomes difficult. Uh, but if you if you start early, uh, this skill of uh, you know providing your own inputs, asking for inputs when needed, uh, being the, the ability to talk or the ability to just go to somebody with a problem, these things are actually you know these are not innate traits. They can you can train yourself on it. So I think if you start early, uh, it's much better. Also, you will see that a lot of your alumni, a lot of your colleagues from uh, school and college, uh, you know, as all of us do our career journeys together. Uh, actually become very, very important. You know, all of us are rising in our careers together. And uh, if you know the alumni networks of, you know, all these large colleges, large institutes, they actually play a very, very important part in each other's career development. So uh, I, I would say that, you know, it kind of starts uh, much earlier. And uh, as Arpana said, uh, there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Uh, if you haven't been out uh, socially, uh, so much because of whatever reasons, whenever you think you're ready, whenever you find the time, whenever you find your calling, uh, it's connecting with people. I mean, you know, don't think of it as a, as a, as a big thing that you have to do, whatever. It's about connecting with people, wherever you find genuine connections start. Great. And so I think the keyword that I, I sort of resonated with me is genuine connections, right? And sometimes that is most important because, you know, uh, especially as women, uh, you know, the one thing with most of us struggle with is time, right? So when you're when you're always challenged for time, uh, there has to be some something a little more deeper than just, you know, you know, maybe just, you know, having uh, random conversations and spending time and energy on it, right? Which kind of is a logical uh, flow to my next question and also a question which somebody has asked uh, in the audience uh, about, you know, like, how exactly do you get started, right? I know, Ansu, you mentioned about, hey, you know, you could start with your school networks, college networks, because those are already pre-existing platforms where people know you personally right and you know it's, it's like there is a little bit of a base for you to build on as opposed to you know having to start from ground zero but let's just say for women who are listening in uh, you know and I think a lot of people say how exactly do I start like where do I start right do I do I identify an area that I want to let's say be involved in and ask to be part of the network or uh, like you know you know in the context of professional networking any you know any any advice from any of you in how to get started uh, i can i can i can you know share uh, a few Absolutely. ways uh, it, you know that that i actively uh, do is that uh, uh, both online and offline uh, you find the kind of groups which are aligned with you in your career for example so if you're in marketing there are lots of marketing groups and especially you know on on linkedin and all there are many marketing groups or you will find many marketing conferences happening now not so much offline but otherwise you know many conferences happen right uh, or if you uh, or if you want you can even go to some other interest groups which are not directly aligned to yours but you know like uh, somewhere in the periphery right so you could go to general management groups or whatever so and you start and you start from there you start with meeting people outside your uh, outside your area of uh, people that you know right uh, and and that's the best way to start because uh, 
you know you connect with one person that one person connects you with five other people and and that's how your network grows uh but the but the big thing is that you kind of go and and put yourself out there you listen to others like uh, lots of speakers here have also said that you also contribute right you contribute with your thoughts you contribute with your opportunities and that is how you kind of start building small 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 blocks of network and before you know it it it's it's become big and you know one connection has grown into 10 connections 10 connections have grown into 100 connections and i think with the online world today it is so much more easier to do uh, than than it was let's say 10 years back absolutely and so arpana you wanted to say something now i really think uh, you know anshu kind of really summarized it very well uh, the only thing that i would uh, like to kind of add to it is that pick up something that you can again do consistently like for example i'll take a couple of examples of what i have done and then we talk about professional networking but i'll also talk about other areas where when you go from what is it that you need you will be more successful at it right so within linkedin we already know there are several forums right you start commenting you start articulating your thoughts on a particular subject that either you are interested in or you want aspire uh, to be in even asking questions is a form of you know uh, getting engaged engaged with different people and building your network go for quality in my view than quantity because quantity will happen on its own right your one interaction you do should be an impactful interaction uh, interaction with the set of people that you want to have and you know that while we are saying we have to give it's important to for you to always know what's in it for me right why because you will only network if there's something in it for you right and i'm I'm going to talk about something very basic but uh, for example uh, one of my boys is very interested in football from a very young age and as a working woman it is very difficult for you to make sure that you are able to take them to every football game and practice in town as well as do your work and the only thing you need to do is put in a parenting network of similar minded parents whose kids also play football and do the football duty uh, you know you pay the price you make they take a day off and all the 11 kids go with you and then somebody else does that that's a, i think classic example of how you can come together for a shared need and make it happen but similarly in professional networks also you could have the same need and if you work with the same set of people there is uh in my view there is going to be much more success in getting to the outcome because you're all working towards that purpose that's very insightful uh, arpana right i think somewhere uh, you know just having shared goals or needs is important and i know that i lean in on mummy networks for getting a lot of my own personal uh, you know homework and you know sometimes even you know like last minute your school teacher asks you to send something and i'm home at 9 o'clock and all the stores are closed so where do i go so you know it's obviously you tap into that you know that you know the other uh, network that you that you built uh, but you know just 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 you know my perspective is i just feel that you know what has helped me is you know i think have one area which is like you know professional uh, uh focused and one area which is personal and i think that has helped me a lot right so i work in marketing so you know i like to be part of at least one community uh, and i and i and i consciously make some time and effort to read up about the community and what is the objective and you know why are right you know, let's say it's a cmo network we all stand to gain by let's say sharing experiences of what it means to be a marketer in today's age right and then on the personal side i love writing so i'm part of a lot of writing communities and networks and in fact you know i started blogging about 10 years back but a lot of my growth in the writing space has just been happened because i've been part of the right networks and communities so i my only suggestion is identify you know one or two areas at the most at, and give it a year like i usually give that those two areas a year right because it's not like you can contribute every day Uh, we all have different you know priorities at different stages and phases of our of our you know let's say you know year so just give it some time to see you know some some tangible benefits and and results um i'll now take one audience question i think somebody has asked any tips on networking for introverts so uh, you know uh, ruhi do you want to just take that how do introverts network uh i can take that nishala because i am one and uh, i can't be an expert too to start networking Wonderful. in many ways it was also something which was uh, since i work in hr it is it's also like a uh, necessity of the job so here's a, a few things which i did and i hope uh, it helps the person who's asked this question is uh, i just said that let me start uh, be be a part of one new industry forum every month i of course focused a lot more on uh, people centric forums uh, whatever the individual i said at least in one week i'll take 30 minutes out to 
converse and i think it, 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 for specifically for introverts it'll be very difficult for us to go into large gatherings and start talking to a bunch of people so industry forums which are physical if you're a part of a table you can start having conversations with people who are sitting on either side and slowly slowly uh, you you will build your network the other thing i did uh, very consciously i said i will reach out to one individual person and just you know have like a exchange of ideas saying here's what a, a few things which we did in the company or here's a few things i did in my personal capacity and if you can uh, kind of share the stories with that conscious effort uh, i think over the first 6 7 months i kind of somewhere lost the awkwardness while i still continued to at heart remain an introvert but because the awkwardness went away i continued to practice it slowly it, it becomes a unconscious competence and you just do it very naturally so i really like your answer ruhi so you're saying you know be be more focused and set like sort of little targets for yourself or goals for yourself uh, to kind of put your self out there uh, arpana i know you wanted to add something please go ahead and share yeah. your point there yeah i so like ruhi i am also an introvert so i just want to say that it is networking can happen for introverts and i want to also kind of just say that being an introvert and being shy are two different things an introvert is a person who when they go out and they talk to different people they need their me time in order to get their energy back the the conversation saps the energy of them whereas an extrovert is a person who when they they get their energy from being in the crowd being out there right and they don't need this me time right so just see whether you're shy or you're truly an introvert uh but uh, like everything it is practice 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 right so like you would i think right now if you're looking at ruhi or i you wouldn't think that we are introverts no one would ever no. make out but we know what our personality types are right so it's possible you know make sure like ruhi said go and talk to one person a day and you know take that shyness out of you if that's what it is but if it's only introversion then that's okay you keep limited connects but you make that effort right when you give that energy at some point in time you'll reap those benefits wonderful just one more yeah something. go ahead please go ahead reema yeah so i think the question was from somebody called uh, saba khan so uh, my point is see there is something about within and outside so within organization uh, perhaps it's slightly easier try to be a part of as many initiatives as you can being a part of multiple organizational initiatives going beyond your area and trying to contribute that always helps once you keep doing that repeatedly consistently you get some success out of it couple of people compliments you automatically you are in a more uh, confident zone and continue to skill yourself and develop yourself there's no substitute to that the confidence happens you know i think a majority of us seem to be in the introvert zone so am i but that has helped wonderful it, i i think we're getting a lot of um, uh, questions from the audience because the topic seems to be connecting with a lot of people so i'll read one more how does one balance the professional and personal boundaries when uh, networking uh, any suggestions or can they overlap Uh, so anyone who wants to answer please go ahead i only take ahead. this because i've done a supplier management role and uh, <laughs> you know you can never be friends with your customer or whatever <laughs> so so uh, you know in this particular case i was the customer i was on the ground living my day with our suppliers and they were all my age and you could be great friends right but yes i did make sure there was a boundary that i drew so that it didn't come in the way of the job that i had to do so i think uh, the the while the answer is very subjective because it depends on what kind of a group you are in but i think if it's in a professional space and there is a specific role you are doing it is important that you keep that boundary in my view because sometimes it can come in the way of how you want to kind of professionally work through it in many cases you know i did break those boundaries after i was through that role because those were good you know relationships and good people that i would like to interact with in the future and keep as a part of my network but while i was in that role i kept it very very you know let's say professional because otherwise i would lose the ability i would have to negotiate which i needed very seriously in the role that i was doing I sure and so go ahead I would just say I would just say that you know there is no uh, there is no rule book here uh, the boundaries are drawn by you uh, you know uh, so and I, a great example comes to mind is uh, is how is tinder different from linkedin for example right uh, 
uh, you might be connected to same people on Tinder and on LinkedIn. So is there a difference or not? The truth is that actually a lot of people are using LinkedIn for dating purposes also. And a lot of people are using Tinder for professional networking also, right? I mean, it is not unusual to think that somebody with whom you connected on Tinder will not end up telling you about your next professional opportunity, right? So it's not really about uh, uh, it's not really about professional or personal. Ultimately, there are two people who are interacting. There are two people who are connecting with each other. Can a professional relationship turn into a personal relationship? Of course, it can. Right. So the boundary is entirely up to you uh, and, and it is something that you will define. And I can also say that it will be defined by you for each person differently. Right. So there is no like set boundary. So just go by that. Go by your gut. Uh, you know how how deeply you want to interact with this person or how superficially you want to interact with this with this person and stay in your comfort zone. Don't allow somebody else to draw that boundary for you. That's that's all I have to say. Thank you, Anshu. We are almost at the end of it. So just I'll do a quick, uh, you know, round across the table. 30 seconds. Any last concluding thoughts on networking? And Reema, we'll start with you. Any any right. concluding thoughts to our audience? Yeah. Yes. So there is one thing that I'll uh, uh, quickly mention. This is about a book by Harvey Coleman. And uh, there's a principle mentioned there about pipe. PIE, okay, performance image exposure. So the point is a bit contentious, uh, but but it says that 10% of your success depends on your performance. You're, you're anyway supposed to perform. Uh, there's a 30% which comes from your um, exposure, from your image, what people think of you, your personal brand. And there is a hoping 60% which comes from exposure. Do people know you? Within the organization, outside the organization, are you seen as a boundary player, boundaryless player or not? So cultivating that exposure aspect, getting invited to parties, being seen, being heard, that is very important. So remember the pie principle. That's my advice to the audience. I'll remember that, Rima. Anshu, uh, any parting thoughts? Yeah, no, I'm I'm gl I'm glad that at the end of the session, uh, Rima did bring up this very important word of partying. So I, I remember, you know, I, I started working with the Star TV and, and Star TV used to have huge amount of parties. Right. And they were always for like salespeople, you know, trying to kind of schmooze all the advertisers and all that. And for for some of us who were starting out in our careers, it was great. It was very exciting, like to have like one party every week and all that. But at the same time, we had to we had to, you know, work, work our, our networking uh, during those parties. So it, I mean, for the, uh, for, for somebody who was beginning a career like me, it did not come that easy. And now I can look back and say that, you know, uh, networking is not equal to just partying, right? And a lot of people get into this whole thing of that, you know, I have to go out drinking or I have to go out for dinners or I have to, and you know, I can't do that. And especially women, right? I can't go out for a dinner every night and I can't hang out, uh, you know, uh, at the bars all the time and all that. Uh, but trust me, uh, I mean, you. there are today, there are so many ways for anybody to network uh, that you don't have to stick to just uh, drinking and smoking and partying and pub hopping and all that. And thank God for that. Thanks, Anshu. Arpana, what about you? I think uh, I want to take the thought uh, that Anshu had kind of talked about earlier in terms of a savings bank. I would say, you know, if we are talking financial, let's talk about a systematic invented plan, right? So you go in and you keep doing it. Right. Just be consistent in your uh, SIPs and there will be a time where you will reap dividend, you know, and you don't need dividends all the time. Right. That SIP you only reap when you need it. It's the same with networking. You have to give a lot. Right. But it has to be in an area that you will be happy giving. It's it can't be forced because if it's forced, you will not do it. So, you know, make it something that is uh, something that you will enjoy. It's in an area that you want to network in and give. Eventually you will reap the dividends. Wow. We have pi and we have parties and we have SIPs. Ruhi, what do we have from you? <laughs> Hi. Uh, sorry, I got locked out and came back. So I, your question is that what are the parting thoughts on networking? Absolutely, Ruhi, right. yes. Okay, great. So I, I'd just say that, uh, you know, a few things to be kept in mind. One is the diversity of your network. Uh, as diverse as it can be, it'll just keep you very interested. Uh, otherwise, you know, it, it can get very boring if you only focus on one. Second is, uh, uh, which is, you know, the diversity would mean the width. Second is consistency. Like we said that if you can set small goals, half an hour every week or one new forum every month. And the last but not the least, uh, depth of your relationships. Because again, it, uh, I mean, Ansu and uh, Rima mentioned the entire thing about the parties and that's not something which is very natural to how women are wired. So women would like to have fewer but deeper networks. 
So the depth of, so uh, the width, which is your diversity, second would be consistency, and third would be the depth you can uh, create in your relationships. Thank you so much, Ruhi. That was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, piece of uh, uh, insight. And uh, again, thank you so much, Dr. Reema, Ansu, Arpana, and Ruhi. It was a wonderful conversation. And I, the only thought that I will leave everyone with is, you know, it is important to network, uh, plan for it, prioritize it, and just take it at your pace and have fun in networking because at the end of the day, that's most important. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.